Dust till dawn. Dust till dawn. How's it going, Rogues Gallery? And welcome to another Flesh and Blood video here on Red Zone Rogue. Today, we're going to go over the Dusk Till Dawn lore recap. I'm going to read it to you, basically, so you don't have to read it. And I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on everything. This is basically a recap, but it also has a couple little tiny morsels of new information about the lore. Um, I'm pretty excited for Dusk Till Dawn, and I think it's a pivotal lore set. Um, really curious how to see to see how they incorporate other aspects of Wraith into the set, or if it's very centralized with Solana and the Monastery, and maybe some of the um, Aryan heroes as well. So, without further ado, let's get into it, because it's a pretty short article. Uh, I would recommend reading it yourself, and there's a lot of articles within the article that you can read, but um, if you like the content, please subscribe, like the video, I appreciate it. So, let's get into the Dust Hold On lore recap. So, here we go. War ravages the heart of Wraith as the forces of light and shadow battle for firmament and future. The seed of this lingering conflict began in a fractured between faith and freedom. Um, so this is going to basically talk about the the divide between the Demonastery and Solana. They basically used to be unified and split, split off for the most part. So, thousands of years ago, the devout first Grand Magister and Architect of Holy Solana denounced soul and humanity's growing subservience to the Aesir of Light. So this says some stuff right off the bat. Soul is an Aesir, and we know that many of the heroes are fighting to prevent the Aesir from basically enslaving humanity. And there's there, we know about Aesir scattered across the world of Wraith, right? We know there's a slumbering Aesir underneath Mount Volcor. There is an Aesir in the pits. There are the Aesir that Oldham is familiar with. So it's very important. So this is a, is a really important thing to note that Sol is an Aesir, the Aesir of Light. Um, in this act of divine defiance, the devout became the apostate. So the apostate is a very key figure. I really hope we see them in Dust Till Dawn. Um, and you have to keep in mind, they were the first Grand Magister and the architect of Solana. So them denouncing Sol is a big deal. That means they found something that was definitely worthy of um, caution, worthy of concern. So the Order of the Light condemned the apostate's heresy. They executed the architect's 13 most devoted disciples and cast the former Grand Magister out of Solana. They literally killed all of his dudes. So I would be a little angry as well. The apostate uh, found refuge on a desolate island in the South Seas of Wraith. There the architect built another edifice, one to rival and surpass even the city of Solana, and named it the Demonastery. The apostate studied and toiled, delving into the secrets of Wraith and its mirror world, Arathiel. I think there might be something here with this. Is there? An, is this an anagram? Wraith is definitely in this name. So we have we have an upside down. We have a mirror world of Wraith, Arathiel. It's the Shadow Realm, basically. Um, you, you sent him to the Shadow Realm. Over time, others found that a monastery, heretics and iconoclasts, the brilliant and the obsessed, that a monastery's inhabitants grew to such a number, their work of such power, that the apostate once again incited the wrath of Solana. The Hand of Sol laid siege to the Sanctuary of Blasphemy, forcing its architect into a desperate act, relinquishing flesh and blood. Eh. The apostate infused their life force into the masonry and mortar of their most beloved creation, Sol uh, the monastery, and in doing so, ripped the island from the tethers of reality. The monastery now floats in a liminal space between Wraith and Arathiel, sustained and animated by its founder's unholy essence. In every brick and rune, quarter and cell, the apostate waits with immortal patience for the coming of dusk and shadow's ultimate victory over the light. Now, it says like it's unholy and stuff, but you really got a feel for the Grand Magister, the apostate, because they're like, yo, souls like trying to enslave you and then everyone's like no we're gonna kill all your guys and kick you out so it's like it's it's one of those questions of like who's who's really the bad guy here and i'm leaning that solana is not all great though perhaps it's one of those situations where 
the inhabitants don't really know what they're kind of into. So here we have, many centuries have passed. In that time, the monastery has continued to attract wild thinkers and rebellious heretics from all over race, some by choice, some by circumstance. Viserai, enslaved and transformed by the mad fancies of Lord Sutcliffe. So here's like a story about Viserai. If you'd like to go into it, we're not going to. We're just going to do the, the broad strokes here. Chain and the Disciples of Pain, hungry to harness the power of Urser, the Soul Reaper. Levia, driven by Lady Barthamont into the ravening embrace of Blasmophet, the Soul Harvester. And Vincet, lured into the shadows by the longings of Nasreth, the Soul Harrower. So here we have the the name of the next demon essentially and so many more led by visions and nightmares to the gates of the monastery and the beshadowed embra domains of arathiel belong, uh, beyond so um nasreth is an embra so is uh, blasmophet and uh, urser seeing soul as their opposition to true freedom freedom and wraith the denizens of the monastery have launched previous attacks against Solana. Divided in purpose and dogma, these attacks have all fallen short. Yet, learning is prized above all else in the monastery. Every failure studied and dissected. Building upon the sinister works of Lord Sutcliffe and Chain, this dark assembly has harnessed the dimensional gateway and unleashed a shadow-born horde upon Solana's lands of light. So... That's what's kind of going on here. Against this ineluctable onslaught, Solana's heroes have fought and suffered. Uh, once again, I think Solana as a whole is not great, but the heroes likely don't know, except for maybe Prism. Prism has exhausted every history, every tale in the Great Library. She has consulted with the Magisters and con uh, communed with the Heralds. She has prayed to Soul for enlightenment and received her answer, her calling. Guided by Soraya, Herald of Knowledge, she looks with yearning eyes beyond Solana's horizon for the dawn of hope. I, it's really interesting to me that they're like, okay, Prism is guided by Soraya in the same way that Vincent is guided by Nasreth, the Soul Harvester, and Levia, and Blasmophet, and that kind of stuff. Really interesting. I didn't really think of the angels that way, but... Here we have Sir Bolton, Breaker of Dawn, has lost his beloved Irina to the Monsters of Shadow. As an Inquisitor, watched over by Bologna the Wartoon Herald, he now scours the lands, battlegrounds, and villages surrounding Solana for the signs and servants of Shadow. He does this for his people, but in his heart, he fights for the survival of his only son. So once again, we have another uh, hero of Solana that is kind of like associated with one of the Heralds, this time Bologna the Wartoon Herald. During the Iron Song, has seen dear friends consumed by this conflict. Her mentor, Minerva Temis, was the latest in a long line of sacrifices for soul. I highly recommend reading Morlock Hill. I think it's one of their better stories. It's really good, really interesting. Um, though it doesn't give... It doesn't give Dorinthia a... A, like, a angelic follower. Perhaps it's only for light heroes? Shiana has traversed treachery and tragedy to gain aid for her besieged home, only to be thwarted by assassination, yo, and civil war in Volcor. And once again, here we have some pieces going over that. And then the last lines here, we see that for the first time since the... Let me start that over. For the first time since the turning of the apostate, Solana fears for its future. As the mirrored worlds draw ever closer, as the progeny of Embra fight the servants of an Aesir, the fate of humanity teeters on the brink. Who shall prevail, the shadow or the light? Only one thing is certain. Whatever the victory, Wraith shall feel its effects for aeons to come. I actually hope the shadow wins. Please let me know in the comments down below um, who you hope wins. But I think it's more interesting if the shadow wins. I have a feeling that Solana and the light's going to win, but it's going to not be good. Like... It's going to be a bad thing because the Aesir have won. And then I think a lot of the heroes are going to realize like, oh crap, what have we done? Kind of thing. Like, why did we, why did we ally with this? Um, in any case, if you'd like to go deeper into the lore, I recommend checking out this article and reading all of these individual stories. They're all fantastic. Uh, some of them go over things that aren't 100% tied to this. Like In Flames here is more about the assassination in Volcor, just kind of like the stuff that's going on in Volcor. 
Um, but like I said, in Volcor, there is an Aesir slumbering underneath Mount Volcor, which is going to be very relevant at some point. Currently, this big battle is only against one single Aesir, but I believe every region has one. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Let me know if you'd like to see some more lore stuff. I apologize if I stumbled a little bit. My reading stories kind of cadence is, uh, um, it's not a muscle that I've worked recently, but uh, yeah, let me know. I appreciate it. And um, we'll see you next time.